So let's talk about America's crisis of democracy. Giving Americans a voice on the job by securing their right to organize unions is not much different than the task of giving citizens a voice in their governments by securing their civil rights, including the right to vote, right? These rights can't be separated in a free society. Labor rights and voting rights, they go hand in hand. For more than 50 years, our efforts to achieve labor law reform have been blocked by the Senate filibuster. Despite majority support for bills like the Employee Free Choice Act and the Protect the Right to Organize Act. In a legislative body that already gives small states with small populations disproportionate power, the filibuster has effectively institutionalized minority rule. Now the labor movement, the labor movement has been under assault, that's us, that's you, by right-wing politicians and their corporate backers for decades. It's nothing new. Starting in the 1970s, corporations have funded right-wing think tanks and organizations that are dedicated to putting pro-business federal judges on the bench who have gradually weakened labor's right to organize and effectively eliminated the right to strike. Over the past decade, these same anti-democratic, small-d democratic forces have trained their sights on democracy itself. And empowered by the Supreme Court decisions that removed all limits on political spending by corporations and gutted the Voting Rights Act of 1965, we've seen a proliferation of voter suppression schemes, the widespread use of gerrymandering, and an explosion of campaign spending by dark money billionaires and millionaires. So powerful, very powerful economic interests are both making it harder for working class people to vote and drowning out their voices in the media. And if you view it in that context, the assault on the United States Capitol on January 6, 2021, that didn't cause our crisis of democracy. It was a result of it. Events like that don't happen in healthy democracies. For the first time in our history, a losing candidate tried to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power by inciting a mob and plotting with right-wing extremists to prevent the certification of a free and fair election. And at the time, at the time, I wrote in my president's message in that February of 2021, after witnessing the attack, looking out my window, the attack was a disgraceful betrayal of our dem democracy, our elected officials, and the law enforcement personnel who protect them. That it was incited by the outgoing president of the freaking United States who falsely claimed that the presidential election had been marred by fraud and irregularities makes it even more appalling. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, that danger hasn't passed. More than 40% of Americans still believe the 2020 presidential election was stolen. Despite, 
despite the contrary evidence, testimony, and proof provided by Republicans, Democrats, and Trump supporters alike who were most intimately involved in the electoral process. That's important. Persistent misinformation about election fraud is fueling yet another wave of voter suppression at the state level, and it's animating the campaigns of hundreds of candidates. In this year's midterm elections, we got to fight back. We can't rebuild. We can't rebuild our labor movement without also rebuilding our democracy. Now, that was a big theme at the 2022 AFL convention in uh, Philadelphia a couple weeks ago. And it also drives the NALC support for the National Vote at Home Coalition. The coalition gives us a way to fight for a healthier democracy by expanding vote by mail options for all Americans. And think about it, the 2020 election actually demonstrated the Democratic power of mail ballots as states, Republican and Democrat alike, turned to vote by mail to help citizens vote safely during the pandemic, right? As a result, voter turnout, think about these numbers, voter turnout soared to the highest level in more than 100 years, as the percentage of votes cast on mail ballots more than doubled to 46% of all votes from 2016 to 2020. That's huge. But think about this, too. The legacy of the 2020 elections should be the remarkable everyday heroism of postal workers who made the surge in mail-in voting possible, not the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. And to prevent this, we got to do all we can to turn out our friends, our families and our fellow citizens in the midterm elections in support of pro-democracy candidates. In a real sense, in a real sense, democracy itself is on the ballot in November. And in recognition of this fact, this week our legislative and political booth will and has distributed wristbands with a simple message on them. It says, I'm voting for democracy in 2022. And we're asking delegates to bring some of these wristbands home to share with their brothers and sisters in your branches. By wearing these wristbands, we can kind of highlight our shared values and our union's commitment to democracy. By voting, we can begin the arduous work of restoring confidence in our public institutions and send a message that we won't let democracy fail on our watch. Our union has been tested over the last four years. We've risen to the occasion and we've delivered for our members. But we've also been tested as individuals. The real heroes of the NALC, the real heroes of the NALC during these trying times have been the rank and file members of our union who serve on the front lines of the still lingering pandemic every day.
And while NALC has strived to serve and protect its members, letter carriers continue to serve and protect the American people in a time of crisis. What did we do? We helped tens of millions of Americans work from home, shelter in place, and stay safe by delivering prescription drugs, household necessities, and billions of e-commerce packages. We distributed relief checks from the Treasury and health bulletins from the CDC. We made it possible for nearly half of the country's 160 million voters to safely cast their ballots by mail in 2020 in the highest turnout election in our lifetimes. And we have delivered and continue to deliver every day do-it-yourself COVID-19 test kits that have helped tens of millions of Americans monitor their health status and prevent the further spread of the virus. Letter carriers have always known how essential we are to the political, social, and economic well-being of our country long before COVID-19 struck. But now the rest of the country has taken notice, too. So much so that the Postal Service landed the very top slot, that means number one, on the Harris Polls list of America's most essential enterprises in May of 2020. Around the same time, the Pew Research Center released a public opinion poll on the attitudes of Americans towards various agencies of the federal government. And as has been true for decades, the Postal Service had the highest approval rating, an astounding 91 percent of those surveyed reporting having a favorable view of the United States Postal Service, and that means you. So inspired by this overwhelming public support, and in celebration of our contributions to American life during the once-in-a-century pandemic, we chose the theme of the 72nd Biennial Convention NALC, a union of essential workers. And that theme feels right to me. Not only because NALC represents essential workers, but because all of you elected delegates are essential to the success of our union. You're the shop stewards who enforce our contract, the branch officers who give life and energy to our branches, the health benefit and MBA representatives who make those services real for our members, the food drive and, and MDA coordinators who power our community service activities, the political and legislative activists who drive our legislative agenda, the LICPIF contributors who amplify our advocacy, and the retired members whose experience, knowledge, commitment animate the NELC's essential spirit of solidarity. Today, we are together a union of essential workers. So once again, Welcome to Chicago, brothers and sisters. I look forward to a great convention. Let's get to work on what comes next in the great journey of the National Association of Letter Carriers. Thank you.